payment of his job in Transformers Animated is almost 10 years old. How am I not dead yet? Transformers! I don't have to worry, my time will come. But in the case of this show, its time already came. Which is unfortunate because Transformers Animated was a pretty good show. I would even go so far as to say that it was the Beast Wars of its generation. Good story, good characters, great voice acting. Tom Kenny as Starscream was brilliant, but best of all, the animation isn't garbage. The characters of Transformers Animated were your expected regulars, but one of the best original characters to come out of the show was Lockdown, a sadistic bounty hunter with an obsession of collecting trophies from his victims, and he had the smooth voice of Lance Henriksen, also known as Bishop from Aliens. Bill Paxton, rest in peace. Lockdown was such a breakout character that he became a mainstay of the Transformers franchise, with several toys to his name, and even being adapted for Transformers Age of One Will It End. I like Lockdown so much that he was my first and only figure from the Transformers Animated toy line, which I heard was pretty good, but unfortunately I missed out on most of it. And over the course of 10 years, I lost my lockdown toy. So when I heard that Takara Tomi was repainting the figure and releasing it under their Transformers Adventure toy line, which is just the Japanese name for Transformers Robots in Disguise, I had to have this guy. Now let me try ignoring the fact that Takara Tomi recycled a 10 year old figure to make a quick buck. Is this mold as good as I remember? Yeah. The painting of the sculpting on this figure is great. One of my favorite aspects of Lockdown's design was his colors. There's something about the color combination of green and black that makes me feel tingy in my pink. And for the repaint, that color combination is still there, but with some added bits of purple. And I gotta say, it looks beautiful. The face sculpt is fantastic, perfectly show accurate. And he's even got some pipe lighting that they painted over what? So the paint job is undeniably beautiful, but the sculpting on the figure is where I have a few issues. But let me make it clear, I love how tall and lanky the figure is. It's just too bad that they couldn't continue that aesthetic with the legs. I love me some thunder thighs, but not in this context. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't flow as well as the show model. Which makes me wonder, with all the advancements in Transformers toy engineering, why hasn't Transformers Animated got any third-party love? I I know that figures a thing, but that's more in line with the traditional Transformers aesthetic. What I'm suggesting is super show accurate animated figures, lanky limbs and all, but fully transformable. Now it might seem physically impossible for this to get to that, but if the masterpiece Megatron is a thing, anything's possible. No excuse. But thick thighs are the least of this figure's problems. What. The. This is stupid. Now I hear there might be a way to make the wrist point straight out, but the fact that I'm talking about this at all is infuriating. Hasbro, Takara, treat your wrist better for Christ! So I'm not fixing the wrist anytime soon, but at least you can cover up one of his hands with his accessories. You get a hook hand that plugs right into here, and an EMP generator which he stole from Ratchet the Bastard. And now lockdown just feels complete. And while the hook's on his arm, you can push down on the EMP to activate some cannons. And that works by having this little nub push this little button. Pretty smart. And if for some strange reason you're not using the hook hand, you could always store it on his ass. That simulates the coattails he had in the show. And while we're at his back, apparently this distractingly colorful Decepticon symbol is scannable. Now this wasn't on the original animated toy so I'm completely lost here. Also I don't have the Robots in the Skies app so leave it down in the comments. Tell me what it does if you know. Now it wouldn't be a proper Transformers figure if it didn't have any of that. <laughs> Rotation at the arm. Arm moves out. Arm moves even more out. Bend at the elbow. Ball joint at the lower elbow which acts as another elbow joint. Of course every ball joint is embedded with a swivel. <laughs> Coattail moves up and down, swivel fuck, ball joint at the hips, which allows for a lot of rotation. Legs move back that far, pretty good spread, little bit of that thigh swivel, bend at the knee, up and down at the ankle, and that's it. Posability is decent, but this is definitely where the figure shows its age. I mean, of course, there's the wrist, which I don't want to think about anymore, and that knee is just trash. But what's not trash is the figure's size. Here's Figma Madoka Academy, SH Monster Arts Godzilla, Masterpiece Optimus Prime, and another Takara Tomy repaint, the Transformers Generations Rhinox. So despite the wrist and the thick legs, I like the robot Mode. But the car mode? Yeah, I like it too. Here we have the car mode. This thing looks badass, one of my favorite alternate modes ever. It's sleek but also beefy, so it could go fast while crushing smaller cars along the way. Not to mention all that ah, Surprising that these spikes are made of rubber for the kids, but I appreciate it. The transparent green parts are a good contrast to this wasteland of gray, which kind of brings me to my major issue. While this repaint made the robot mode look really cool, the car mode is very plain. To be fair, the original car mode did not have much color either, but those bits of green did a lot to keep that design interesting. This is just... Yeah, the spikes aren't even painted. For such a beautiful paint job, it's surprising why they didn't decide to pimp out the car mode. Oh well, it's disappointing. That really is only a painting issue though. The car mode itself is really cool and it has minimal kibble. Except for this little peekaboo right here. And one of my favorite aspects of this mode was the extreme size difference between the modes. Because goddamn, this car is small. Monica, Godzilla, Prime, Rhinox. So let's get him back to this great yeah. robot mode because overall, 
This figure's great. Despite my complaints, and I think they're legitimate complaints, this figure from 10 years ago still holds up. Some of the posability might be dated, and the paint job on the car is not as good as it used to be, but if you're a Lockdown fan or missed out on the animated toy line, I suggest picking it up. Sure, the price is a little crappy for a deluxe class Transformer. This guy was worth 10 bucks back in the day, but 20 bucks is still not bad. I mean, it was enough for me to afford, and I lost my sponsor. You can't get this figure at Lunar Toy Store anyway, so fuck it. Just so we're completely clear, Lunar Toy Store did not leave me. I was actually the one who decided to drop their logo from my channel. And that was only because they were sponsoring me so inconsistently that it would be lying to you guys to claim that this channel was brought to you by Lunar Toy Store. If anything, this channel was brought to you by you on Patreon. <laughs> Lunar Toy Store will still sponsor me and I do still encourage you go buy from them, but they'll do it at their own pace, which means that I have to depend on Patreon more than ever. And if you can't contribute, I completely understand and be assured that I'm making enough to bring you regular reviews. But Monica ain't coming back at this rate. <laughs>